All right. And let me just try to figure out if there's a way to put you on the center stage, Eve. Um, spotlight for everyone. How's that? Everyone good? Cool. Perfect. All right. <laughs> right where you belong. All right. So um, I'm going to start. So first of all, hi, everybody, and welcome to our final Exeter Wins event of Women's History Month. We've had quite a run. I am very excited to welcome back New York Times bestselling author Eve Rodsky. Eve is a Harvard-educated lawyer, an expert facilitator, and the author of Fair Play and Find Your Unicorn Space, which I happen to have right here. And I, oh, my, these little wonky virtual back. <laughs> and then I've got this one here. So check them out behind Eve. I think we're, we're twinning in that way. Um, E spoke with us last year in Women's History Month, right about this time, on the topic of invisible work and fair play. And we had such a great response, and I am wearing my unicorn earrings right now that Yay. you after the event. Um, I, so loved, I, to ask I loved our event, Cody. It was so great. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And so um, we really wanted to hear more about Eve's recent work and her research. So just a little bit more about Eve, and sorry to uh, keep going, but I just want everyone to know who wasn't here last year more about you. So Eve Rodsky transformed a blueberries breakdown into a catalyst for social change when she applied her Harvard-trained background in organizational management to ask the simple yet profound question, what would happen if we treated our homes as our most important organizations? Her New York Times bestselling book and Reese, Reese's book club pick, Fair Play, a gamified life management system that helps partners rebalance their domestic workload and reimagine their relationships, has elevated the cultural conversation about the value of unpaid labor and care. And I think you were first, Eve. You really started this conversation. There's a Thank lot. Thank you. Of yeah. Um, in her highly anticipated follow-up, Find Your Unicorn Space, Reclaim Your Creative Life in a Too Busy World, Eve explores the cross-section between the science of creativity, productivity, and resilience. And described as the antidote to physical, mental, and emotional burnout, Eve aims to inspire a new narrative around the quality of time and the individual right to, pers to personal time choice that influences sustainable and lasting change on a policy level. And I love this one line Eve says in, I think, all of her books, but your time is like diamonds. I use that all the time, but it's, it's my favorite. Um, Eve's work is backed by Hello Sunshine, Reese Witherspoon's media company, whose mission is to change the narrative for women through storytelling. And I just want to point out how important this is. So I, I got a Harvard study this morning from, from Brandon Daniels on the issue of female founders and the funding they received. And there was just this alarming disparity of women in the venture capital market. So I'm going to read a couple of quick stats. 28% of companies are founded by women. Over the last 30 years of the total VC market, funding was only 2.4% to women. And those companies were funded at a quarter of the funding when, men, when women asked for it versus when men who went to uh, the VCs, they received half. So if you're keeping score at home, that's about half of what men get, even when the disparity is already existing. So um, it, there's a, it's, it's a big deal to have a, a company these days. And Eve, you've done a great job, and so has Hello Sunshine. OK, last piece here. Eve draws from professional expertise in time management and data garnered from 500 plus global interviews to share an intentional approach to setting new personal goals and igniting curiosity. And we know that everyone here really appreciates research. And with the support of Hello Sunshine, Eve uses evidence-backed research to empower the creative genius within you. And the hope from an engaging talk and workshop like today is that you all leave with a unique antidote to burnout. Um, and lastly, and this is very important, Eve was born and raised by a single mom in New York City and now lives in Los Angeles, as we just found out, with her husband, Seth, and their three children. So I'm going to flip to the agenda today, but welcome, Eve, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Cody. And we're going to play some games, so. No, it's going to be super fun. Yes. <laughs> Later, we're gonna play some games. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen just to give everybody that little agenda view, which I've shared around to everybody. But can everyone see this? It's a little wonky, but um, okay. So here's our agenda. We're gonna do a Q and A at first, a um, little bit of a moderated one with me and Eve. And then we're gonna talk through finding your unicorn space, which is the game that, that um, Eve mentioned, but it's sort of like Cards Against Humanity. I got a preview and it's really fun. So I'm excited. People start to think about who, if you wanna raise your hand. And then lastly, you know, I hope people came with questions, but Eve will be answering questions um, on this call. So without further ado, um, I wanna start with the concept of burnout and why we in Exeter Wins picked this topic for today. I can't tell you how often I hear various versions of this at work and in my personal life. And when it comes to work at Exeter, there's this extra layer of emotional labor that I think our workforce is experiencing due to the often high nature, high stakes nature of our business. 
And it's right from the headlines. It's why we can feel proud of being a purpose-driven company. But with that purpose, perhaps comes even more burnout because you can't put it away. So I'm going to go, what is, the pur the, what is this burnout? Is it languishing? Is it an inability to disconnect? Are we right that the people who are doing purpose-driven work, who are more connected, more engaged, feel higher stakes, have a faster path to burnout? And succinctly, how do you define what does burnout look like? What are the signs and what's the latest research? So a lot, a lot in there, but I think it's uh, just important as level set. Well, thank you, Cody, for <clears throat> such an amazing introduction. Thank you all for being here. We're going to play <clears throat> this game later, so this will be interactive. Uh, you're welcome to keep cameras on. We love to see you. But I think we're going to start by setting some, just ground us in what real burnout is, what, what the symptoms are. The most interesting research, Cody, to me on burnout, because we know that typical symptoms of burnout look like languishing. That was uh, Adam Grant's word of 2021. Um, so one of my favorite memes is somebody who said, I just got to get through this week. And I've been saying that for two years. <laughs> um, so that that's a typical burnout. Um, we also know that burnout is if when you go away, or if you take a vacation or a relaxing weekend, that you still don't feel rested um, on when you come back. Um, but the most interesting research on burnout that has come out recently is that um, one of the top signs of burnout is an inability to disconnect. So if you almost feel like the idea of putting your phone in the bathroom and not by your bed makes you shake, then you may be experiencing a, a symptom of burnout. Um, and so I think, oh, thank you, Kylie, for saying that. It's, it's new research I had never um, seen that before. So I think that it's really important that we realize that that inability to disconnect is a symptom of burnout because you may think, oh, Cody's killing it. She's the best. You know, she's always on. She can't be burnt out. Those are the employees you probably should be paying most attention to. The other uh, symptom of, uh, of burnout that I think we should at least uh, recognize is cynicism. So if you start seeing on your teams, uh, no, we can't do that. We've always done it this way. Uh, I've been here too long. Uh, we've tried that already, it doesn't work. Those types of responses are often a symptom of burnout, Cody. And so what we're here today to do is talk about how creativity is an antidote to burnout. Uh, and I wish, I wish, Cody, I could tell you and this amazing group of people here at Exeter that the antidote to burnout was a walk around the block or faking a commute or um, even a drink with a friend. Really what we're talking about today is the only true antidote to burnout. And that's being consistently interested in your own life. That's really interesting. I, uh, that resonates for me. So many things you said, I'm like, okay, I need that emoji with the, with the hand raise on, on Zoom. And I'm sure many on this call do too. Um, so just, just going back into, I guess, now the next step, which is what is a unicorn space? So you mentioned creativity, but how does unicorn space help us from burnout? Um, and how do you make sure it's not just one more thing on your to-do list? And then I would just say for this audience, maybe tailoring it to why does it matter for a business? So how does it enrich collaboration? How does it help product? What are the tangible business benefits? You know, if you, if you need a business case. Um, yes, you do. <laughs> and I'll say like, you know, I'm not going to ask anybody to distill the seven handbooks of positive organizational scholarship because I'll do it here for you. Um, and I'll sum it up in pretty much one sentence. I think people have been throwing around lately uh, these words of psychological safety, <clears throat> of radical candor, of burnout, but not really understanding what they mean, Cody, and not really doing anything about it. So this is going to be a radical notion, uh, but I'm writing my, my third book. It's, it's going to be called Leading Fair. You hear it first here. Um, probably not coming out till 2024, but the research we're seeing now is, let me just give you one of the top Google searches of last year. One of the top Google searches, and this breaks my heart, is people literally typing into a computer, how do I make my life a lot better now? And they think they're gonna get their answer from Google. Mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you, you're not gonna get your answer from Google, but you can get your answer from your boss, mm -hmm. from your leadership team. And so you may have heard the term servant leadership. I, I, I ascribe to that. I think it's a really important term, but really the way I look at servant leadership is 
I want Cody on my team, I want to center that, that sentiment. Mm -hmm. How can I make Cody's life a lot better now? And even more important, how can Cody make her life a lot better now? And so I really truly believe servant leadership starts in the home, Mm -hmm. looking at people's home structures, making sure that they feel completely and totally supported in those home structures and not pitting uh, people, women who don't have kids against people who have caregiving responsibilities. <clears throat> One last, excuse me, important stat is that 18 to 34 year old women are the most burned out uh, segment in our population right now. <clears throat> Often because again, so many of these women say it's hard for me to protect my boundaries. I'm doing a lot of emotional labor. I'm running <clears throat> ERG task force unpaid. <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> I have allergies starting pollen today. Oh, yeah. Um, and we're doing all this unpaid labor. And I also can't say I need to leave at five to go pick up my kid from, from daycare. So we don't want to pit employees who have caregiving responsibilities against those who don't. We want to center as a culture. How do I help you make your life a lot better now? Part of that is daily flourishing. And the one thing that we know is associated with daily flourishing, because we love research and Cody said, bring a lot of research here is creativity. Creativity is actually associated with daily flourishing. So that's what we're going to play today. We're going to show you how to do leadership exercises you can do in your teams that bring psychological safety without the oversharing. Um, One of those is really examining what your unicorn space is. A unicorn space is different than traditional creativity where people think of it as Van Gogh in a dark room, maybe cutting off his ear with paintbrushes. We're talking here about a cycle, Cody, of curiosity. I wonder, fill in the blank, starting your, I wonder, curiosity, connection, and completion. When you have that type of cycle in your life, uh, it becomes very, very powerful. That's why we call it a unicorn space, because like the mythical equine, it's beautiful, but often it doesn't exist because we are often in our roles as parents and or partners and or professionals. And we often don't give ourselves permission to be unavailable to experience a unicorn space cycle. One of the things I, I love in your book, and, and I'm gonna launch a poll in a second just to kind of you know give a little bit more interaction, but um, you talk about what unicorn space isn't. You know, you talk about not so, much, not so much as what it is, but what it isn't. Do you wanna just give a little uh, preview of, you know, what isn't a unicorn space so everybody understands? Well, it's so sad. I mean, I'll have people say to me, um, Eve on Sunday, I took a 20 minute walk. I'm like, well, that's, that's, that's great. I mean, that's like the the baseline and I didn't feel guilty about it. That's not what we're talking about here. Self-care, basic self-care is important. Uh, taking a walk is important. Uh, getting your heart pumping is important. A spin class is important. Uh, a drink with a friend, Cody is important. This is something different. Uh, This is not a hobby. This is not a passion project. This is not a side hustle. This is how we incorporate daily flourishing into our lives as an antidote to burnout. And so that's why Unicorn Space, I wish I could tell you again that it's a a spin class, (laughs) but it really is, we're looking at mental and physical health here and what the studies show. And the studies show that that a creative life is a connected life. And when you have curiosity, connection, and completion, uh, it's that is really what's tied to mental and physical health. Again, spin class is great. It's not the same burst of, and we'll talk a little bit about the science later, but we're talking about these bursts. Um, and as one person said to me, Eve, you can also help people describe it in a feeling, because this is somebody who adopted unicorn space a person who started to jump, she's a polar bear. She started to jump into the Atlantic ocean every Saturday and her partner back to fair play. What we talked about last year is a man and he takes care of the kids by himself. Mm -hmm. That's a radical notion still in this country that men can take care of kids by themselves. So she spends Saturday jumping into the Atlantic ocean. And the experience is what I hear often for people who are in a unicorn space, Cody. It's an experience of, I can't believe I just did that. So that's what I want from all of you. I wanna gift you meaningful experiences that don't have to happen daily, but that happen often where you say to yourself, I can't believe I just did that. Right, totally. I mean, that 
first of all, I'm sort of trying to conjure that feeling a little bit. I don't think I've had it. Yes. <laughs> it um, sounds like a rush. I uh, makes sense to me. And and the the three C's are just so it's it's remind remind, remind all of us. It's it's uh, curiosity. curiosity. You start with curiosity. Um, so another example, this one amazing woman, Kat Medina, that I talk about in Unicorn Space. Mm -hmm. She's a Sam's Club employee. Her husband comes in one night, hears her reading to her son, says, oh my God, I thought you were literally an audio book or a CD or something because you embody the characters. So she Googled the next day, I wonder what do, you know, how to narrate an audio book. So she got curi curious about what it would feel like to actually do that for somebody else. Then she connected with someone online who said, we will take your sample. She does, she, she read princesses behaving badly with a microphone on clearance she got nice. from Sam's club and her husband's laptop. She books an audio narration and she completes it. Huh. So that's curiosity connection completion completion. What she tells me is right after that, she tells her mother and her family, she's getting a tattoo on her arm that says reading books is like breathing air. And her mother says, well, why don't you hold your horses You that you read one book, you're, you, I, you may, might as well wait till you tattoo it on your arm. And what she said is, look, life is hard. And this is an experience that can't be taken away from me. And then I asked her, well, what was your life like before you were narrating audiobooks? And she said, well, what's life like before if you don't breathe air? Huh. And I just think that that's such a beautiful story because she still works at Sam's Club. She narrates audiobooks. Um, yes, there is a pay component now, which complicates things a little bit. Unicorn Space does not have to be anything to do with pay. But the beauty of that story is it's experiences that can't be taken away from us, Cody. And that change you, that, that empower you. Yeah. That empower you, absolutely. And often that you're sharing with the world in some component. I love that. No, it's, it's, it's awesome. Um, I'm gonna, I don't know if everyone can see this poll here, but maybe this is a good, can, can everybody see this? Can you, okay, so I would, oh good. Okay, so a lot of words, maybe we can read it out loud just so people can see, but what's your line? So I think going off of what Eve said, you know, what's preventing you, right? So what's your line? I would engage in meaningful activities that make me happy beyond my role as a partner, a parent, a professional, but there's always the but, right? So I don't have enough time to do what I need to do to make the time for things I want to do, which is always sad that they're not the same. It doesn't pay, so why make the time? It's on my list, I just haven't gotten to it yet. My partner and I take turns making time for our own things, my favorite one, Eve, and it's their turn right now. Hmm, when I think about it, it's been their turn for a while. It's like the double <laughs> monologue. Every time I start to engage in something outside of work, parenting, or the house, I inevitably get interrupted by my work, by work email, paying bills, a clogged toilet, or a child tugging on my sleeve. A lot of people answering some of these. There's always something that interrupts or distracts and sidelines my attention. And after that, I have no time left. And I have less time than ever. I don't have any extra time for me. Also sad. And then scheduling me time feels like one more thing to do. So a lot of one more thing. <laughs> well, I'd, lo I'd love to know the answers because we will customize what we say um, next based on the poll. Yeah, so everyone can just please answer. I see 26 out of 67 so far. And I think Thank as you, you Kylie, I, I recognize uh, that all of the above, we probably should have an all of the above option, but we're, the reason why we don't actually is because we're trying to pick out, uh, what, what burnout possible theme we can see, um, through you picking one. So that's why it's helpful to us. And I, I know what if you don't have a partner, I guess, in some of these, you know, some people are, are, uh, overtaxed because they're doing you know more than their share of a shared partnership and then some people don't have a partner and so they have to bear all the load and so it's probably both um impacting people 100 43 out of 66 all right and we'll share it when uh okay is everybody taking a chance to do this i think everybody wants an all of the above that's that's clear it resonates right all right i'm going to give it a, a quick countdown five oh okay four can we get four more and 50 I love it. You're like an auctioneer. There you go. 500 more. <laughs> yeah. Can everybody see them as they're coming through or am I the only one? You're the only one. Oh, okay, cool. So that's okay. why we're waiting. I'm like, I want to see what's All published. Right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to end the poll. Everybody has their last shot right now. 78%. That's a, almost a, a. That's good. That's, that's a quorum. 
<laughs> all right, end poll. So where do we land? Okay, can you all see this? Oh, share results, there we go. Everybody okay, see that? Okay, great. All right, perfect. So we have a winner with, I don't have enough time to do what I need to do to make time for what I wanna do. That's important. Mm -hmm. That's important, Cody. And I wanna say that curiosity, connection, completion, the creativity framework that we'll play and, and we'll model is really the, just the second half of unicorn space because actually that data is very similar how they came in first, second, third order and in, in the 750 people that I interviewed. The number one reason was a lack of time hmm. or perceived time. So when you really unpack that, it's, we're talking Women's History Month. So we can go back to the through line of fair play and unicorn space, which is that time is truly our most valuable currency. We don't, it's an re unrenewable resource. We don't get more of it. But for women, especially, we're conditioned to give it away <clears throat> for free from the moment that we're born. Uh, we give away our most, and so what happens is availability becomes not just a thing, it becomes part of women's identity. And so this idea that we deserve a permission to be unavailable from our roles is actually an unlearning that we need to do. Hmm. And it's unlearning that we need to do. Um, and then it really, really, really um, becomes something that compounds and is made worse over time. If, and I call it the passion gap. Mm -hmm. I start to see this very strange thing in 17 countries where parents, uh, especially women whose children were in fourth grade were saying to me, I have no curiosity left. Mm -hmm. They were saying to me, I have no time and I haven't had time in so long that I wouldn't even have any curiosity left. One woman said to me when I said, well, you have to be curious about something. She came back to me, Cody, and she said, I found what I'm curious about. I'm like, amazing, what is it? And she goes, scrolling my friend's Venmo transaction. <laughs> I am also curious about that. <laughs> and I said, no, no, we're talking about values-based curiosity. Or as Professor Lori Santos, who I love, she has the most popular happiness lab in this country. She has a great podcast too at Yale. She says, make your leisure time nutritious. Mm -hmm. And that's really this idea that you don't have a permission to be unavailable from your roles is because just like Peter Drucker says, we don't measure what we don't manage. We can't, we can't um, manage what we don't measure. We don't prioritize this unicorn space time. We think we will have it at a different stage of life. Mm -hmm. And in fact, one of the most interesting parts of time use data shows that women especially, but all people of all genders say that they're gonna be less busy in six months. Yeah. Well, I think and then the they come in six months, they check on you and they say, hey, Brandon, how are you doing? And then you're more busy. So that's why when you look at this as a life stage issue, I worry for people because it can, you can look at it seasonally, but actually the way I like to look at it is this is really about your daily flourishing. It's as important as taking a vitamin. Creativity redefined as unicorn space is just not optional. It is not optional at any point of your life. And that's why, again, we're all here to say, that's why this is the antidote. This is the true antidote to burnout. It's like saying, don't eat sugar. It's harder said than done, but we're all here to support you in reclaiming this, this type of creativity in your life. No, I love it. It's the, so with, if your time is like diamonds, these are the new three C's, diamonds and three C's. We've defined that and it's not a negotiable. It's just important non-negotiable. We have the, I can't believe I just did that. If you don't believe me still, because you are someone who believes you don't have a permission to be unavailable for these frivolous yeah. activities that have often been defined as a hobby, which is a terrible word because it connotes in frequency. Mm -hmm. Then I will say to you one more thing back to the data. We know that happiness and meaning can correlate, but often when you're burned out, they stop correlating. Um, happiness and meaning correlating is very important for a meaning seeking, uh, species like humans. So what ends up happening is they start to diverge. And what I mean by that is people start reporting happiness without meaning. That's the scrolling, the Venmo transactions. That's the emotional eating I did 
uh, during the pandemic. That's scrolling uh, Twitter. That is a binge watching Netflix. That's hedonic, hedonic pursuits. That one does get into the curiosity and completion bucket though for me. I, I can't, okay. I think Netflix might have a, a real value here, but we can. We okay, can. maybe if you're learning something, we'll talk about that, what card you pick for your unicorn space. <laughs> but um, Tiger King, not so much. So, so voyeurism, not so much, but yes. So, so, so happiness without meaning. Mm -hmm. Then we also see meaning without happiness happening a lot during the pandemic. That is also often associated with caregiving. We know that people would rather be in a root canal chair than hang out with their toddler. By people, I mean me as well. I love you, Anna, but I would rather be in a root canal chair than have to hang out with you all day. And so meaning without happiness was often something we saw in the pandemic as well. The intentional creation of happiness and meaning in these unicorn space activities are what we're talking about. It requires intention. So we don't end up in happiness without meaning experiences or meaning without happiness experiences. That's again, nerding out a little bit, but if you don't believe me, I promise you, the happiness and meaning explosion when they come together is what's linked to your mental and physical health. And those are the experiences we hope we can reclaim today we can, if you're doing them, encourage you to keep doing them and sharing them with your team. But that's really, this is a safe space to talk about uh, what your dreams are. No, I love it. And uh, it makes a lot of sense. It, and it's helpful to have, I think people talk about burnout in this way where, you know, they state it and then kind of give it um, by, by stating it, it, it's very real and people identify with it, but then it's like, okay, so, <laughs> so now what? So, and so then people, I think what's happened and, and I'm going a little rogue here off, off of what we discussed and I would like to move to the game, I think after this, but I'm just curious, like, you know, I've, I've read all these articles and I'm sure everybody else has around this great resignation. And so, you know, has the, has the, the, uh, has meaning changed for people with the pandemic has, you know, have people sort of felt like the veil is a little bit lifted in the things that maybe used to feel like they didn't need to have meaning or that they uh, maybe had meaning before, but now they just don't. Has that been sort of a factor in whatever this sort of uh, rush out of the workplace um, that we've seen and people are going to start new things or like, how, how does that all work together in, in this moment? Absolutely. Um, what we're actually seeing now from the data is it's more of a, less of a great resignation and more of a great reshuffle. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm, what I worry about is people think the grass is greener. So then they leave because they can't take it anymore. They feel burnt out. They give themselves three days off and then they're back to another job where the same things are going to happen. That's why I look at this, like I said, as a new form of leadership. It's why I'm writing a whole other book on it, because like I said, it sort of combines psychological safety and servant leadership in a way that, like I said, centers your unique experiences outside of work. Cody, I know as a leader, you will be more productive inside of our sphere if we do work-life design. This is not about work-life balance. Um, I'm here to help you design what your work and life looks like. And that is, again, why Unicorn Space becomes so powerful. We're going to model right now how you will ask about it, how you can play this later, how you can come back. Because as one person who just came back to the office said, who played this game, she was so proud or happy because she said, you know, because we had had this activity, um, typically we'd come to our cafeteria and the only question people say are what's on your plate today? <laughs> like physically, like what's, what are you eating today? And it's like such a boring conversation. Now, like what's on your plate today has a new metaphor for what unicorn space activity is lighting you up? What are you doing? So the conversations become more meaningful, I love which is of talking about it with your, that's a, that's great. And it gives you, and that's what we'll do. We're going to, we're going to play so that you can then right. model how in your leadership style, you can start to bring, and we'll give you the PDF of this, uh, it's a prototype. So you're helping us also collect data love it. <laughs> we're going to have it, <clears throat> um, hopefully printed, uh, by, um, the end of the year, but for now as a prototype, I think it would be really fun. So this is how we're going to do this. But before I do, before we launch into the game, I do want to say one more thing. If you believe you have a permission to be unavailable, which I'm hoping this talk or the segue to the game has done, there are two other hurdles that I do want to address really quickly, Cody. The other two that came up in our surveys, 
and interviews were, yes, I deserve a permission to be unavailable, but how do I stop the guilt and shame from ruining my unicorn space experience? Mm -hmm. So I think, and I wonder if that resonates with anybody here. If you were doing something for yourself, you can give like a heart emoji or whatever, um, or just react. But do you feel that guilt and shame has a potential to ruin that activity? Uh, that's what we heard a lot about in our data. One woman who we followed, she was so excited to get back to the pandemic. I mean, sorry, get back after the pandemic to what she loves to do. They opened the music room, which had been closed due to like, I guess, people sharing a piano. She has a rental near Lincoln Center. She's a single parent. Her child's in daycare. And she said to me, I know I need this, Eve. I know I need this. Uh, she got her show tunes. She loves to play piano, especially show tunes. She got Rent and uh, Dream Girls. And, and she's telling me about all the music, sheet music she bought. Uh, and then she sits down to go play and the sun is setting because there's a window in the, in the music room and her heart starts to pound because she knows her son doesn't like to be in daycare when it's dark out. Mm -hmm. And so she puts, she closes the piano lid and she goes to go get him. Mm -hmm. So what's very interesting about guilt and shame is that, especially for women, since we're in Women History Month, it's important to know that of all the emotions I'm sure as parents, you may have seen some of you that emotion chart your kids get at school, like disappointed, happy, angry. So I did that emotion chart in my interviews. The only two emotions that people reported changed their behavior in the moment were guilt and shame. So like that woman, I feel the guilt, I don't interrupt it. I changed my behavior based on it. So I don't want guilt and shame to change your behavior if you commit to this type of practice. So what we do know is that a good way to combat the guilt and shame are two things, and then we'll go into the game. One is a reframe for yourself. When you feel guilty to, to stop it from making you make bad decisions, instead of saying, I feel guilty because I'm not putting Anna to bed tonight. Instead, Cody, we reframe it and say, I made the decision not to put Anna to bed tonight because I wanna see Cody and I haven't seen her in a while and friendship is really important. That reframe and then bringing a spiritual friend along with you, an accountability partner, makes you 65% more likely to do something. Mm -hmm. If you have a success partner, someone who does it with you, runs that marathon with you, 99% more likely to do it. So those are all pieces of data that when we decide what card we take, remember, we're going to vanquish guilt and shame, and we're going to grab a spiritual friend, hopefully someone with you at Exeger, who can uh, help you on your unicorn space journey. And the accountability is so helpful, by the way, in all things, especially, you know, maybe not in the unicorn space yet for me, but in working out or in trying to commit to like meditation stuff, it's just so hard to do it by yourself. So um, it's, sure it's like, like we said, a creative life is a connected life. That's what we're happy hoping here. And the other important thing is we're also combating the other crisis besides burnout, which is loneliness. Mm. Ironically, even though people had more people possibly on them in a small space in their home, loneliness went up during the pandemic, of course. Mm -hmm. So this is the opposite of an isolated life, a creative life. So what we need now that we're going to the interactive portion is we need a volunteer. <laughs> to play with us. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be picking a card. Uh, we call it cards for humanity. You're going to be picking a card that speaks to you and you're going to be sharing what that is. And then we're going to have some other people who will volunteer to then take another card in the deck and remix it with yours to add some real fun into your life. So an example, Cody, you pick art. I say to you, why do you like art? You say, well, maybe I'm really upset about what's happening with reproductive rights in this country. I then pick arrows and axes and say, I'm going to combine the arrows and axes card with your art card, Cody. Come with me to an a axe throwing place. We'll put your art up. We'll throw axes at it and we'll call it rage art. So the point of this game is when you can remix things that you love to do, you're more likely to get inspired to start doing them again. 
So we need a volunteer, Cody. You're going to be the volunteer, but otherwise, maybe you can pick on someone. No, we're going no, to say, if you have maybe, if, yeah, if you have your camera on, we're going to assume you're will, you're willing to volunteer. What about Kylie? I see Kylie. Oh, yeah. Okay, Kylie. Hi. Yay. Hi, Kylie. Hi, everyone. Uh, so tell us your name and where and what your role is. My name's Kylie Milky. I'm the business operations manager based out of Canada. Nice to meet you. Okay, hey. so this is how it's gonna work. So there's gonna be, and everybody should follow along because we, we wanna do this uh, twice if we can. Uh, Amy says, go Kylie. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're gonna show you 50 cards. So we're gonna pull it up now. You're gonna get 50 choices. You'll get one minute to scroll through. Everyone else should look as well pick your own, uh, come play with us. So we're gonna show you 50 choices and I'll read them out loud as you see them. And then I just want you to pick one. That's gonna be hard. So you see we have racing, circus, theater and production, snow sports, sports with wheels, outdoors, animals, travel and culture, dance, rhetoric, water sport, sports, performing, sports with balls, triathlon, running, martial arts, memories and archiving, storytelling, keep going. Coding, engineering, games, health and wellness, math and sciences, event planning, research and learning, teaching, fashion, video games, finding, collecting, foraging, writing, design, <laughs> language and anthropology. Okay, keep going. Music, metallurgy, woodworking, arrows and axes, cooking, baking, building and DIY, gardening slash farming, florals, art, stitching and needles, photography, beauty, restoration and renovation, <laughs> pottery. Keep going or genealogy and lineage, spiritual wellness, and or other worldly pursuits. Okay. Do you have your card? Did you, was that too fast or you were able to find one? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I saw one in. So, okay, gonna Cody, follow so you can pull that off so we can highlight. I want to see you, your face, Kylie. We can take the cards down now for a second and we'll pull them back up if that's okay. So, okay. So Kylie, can you tell us which card you picked? Dance. Ooh, I love it. Okay. So these are the questions that we were modeling if we're leaders and we want to ask people what their unicorn space is. Okay. So you pick dance. So I want to know why. Tell me why. I'm a retired dance teacher. I grew up dancing professionally and competitively. Wow. So it's, it's in my heart, blood and soul. <laughs> Uh, what, what, um, is your, is your genre or are they all, or every genre is yours? All of them. I went to an art school as well. So I studied, I studied dance. Oh, wow. Um, what's your favorite ballroom, modern hip hop? Contemporary um, and, and acro, which was combination of gymnastics and really whatever you wanted to throw in there. Oh my God. I love that. Do people on your team know that you were a retired dance teacher? They know that I was in the circus and okay. that I used to say yes. <laughs> I'm my surprised you picked circus. Oh my God. I love it. So um, that's amazing. So we're hearing about Kylie. Um, now this is what I want. This is the next level down, which is how it relates to leadership. Can you tell me what values um, and feelings dance brings up for you? <sighs> Values would be dedication, commitment, and empowerment. And, oh, there's so many different things. Brings up many different things. But in my professional career, it's the listening attention to detail and that competitive side to, you know, do, like, to be on, be on stage. So to perform or always to do your best. Oh, I love that so much. Um, so... What I'm hearing is you reflected the being dedicated to something, having uh, an ability to keep a commitment, empowerment, uh, fostering friendly competition or some competitive uh, feelings in you and the ability to perform, to show another side of yourself um, or uh, a, a very beautiful side of yourself. Those things are things I can write down about Kylie and then ask her if she had those in her life 
during a, a weekly check-in with my team member. So if I, if you're on my team, Kylie, I would say to you, have you felt empowered this week? Have you had a chance to feel competitive this week? Have you had a chance to perform? And if you say, no, I haven't had any of those things in a couple of weeks or no, then I know you probably will be more likely to be burned out. So I wish for you having the ability to perform, to show that side of yourself, to feel competitive, to feel like you're winning at something, to feel empowered. And again, that when you take it down to that level, there's other ways than dance to do that, but it is a way for us to check in uh, on a deeper level, I think, as, as teammates. And that's what we're seeing when people are using this exercise that way. So that's one way to use it by asking someone the, the values and feelings that it brings up for them, because then you can get to people's deeper values in a way that doesn't feel so creepy or weird when people overshare. But then I can keep it, I can keep track of Kylie and say, okay, I know a little bit more about you, right? You're willing to try hard things. I can nominate you for something that, you know, thinks outside the box because you literally performed in the circus. Um, so there's a lot of beauty in what you're saying. Now, the other fun way to play is we need, we're gonna pick a, we're gonna pick a, another volunteer. So Brandon, can we pick you? Yes. Okay, so what I'm gonna ask you to do is we're gonna bring the cards back up. So, so Kylie picked dance. We want you to take another card from all the 50 and I, we want you to just pick one to combine with Kylie's dance card and give her maybe an, a Shark Tank pitch or an idea of something uh, she could do maybe in the next week or so or month that's related to her dance. So, <laughs> I mean, I could be incredibly literal and I could say- you Do literal find, and go outside the box. Like someone <laughs> said, like they picked outdoors for one person to pick dance and one exercise. They said, we just want you to dance outside. Yeah, or, you know, yeah whatever, but pick, pick be either literal and then I'll, we can, if there's something more outside the box, we'll have you pick that as well. Yeah. So showing you them again. So I was I was just gonna pick theater and production. Oh, and I love I, it. One okay. of the most enriching things is to is to uh, get inspired by others. So you'd go and you'd see a, a dance um, a dance performance or a Broadway show or something where you get the opportunity to see um, other dancers inspire you and get you interested in it because that's one of the things that I always do when I'm um, when I'm trying to get back into something all. I'll learn a little bit about what's going on in it. And, you know, that, that can sometimes get my, uh, get me motivated. I love that so much. Um, I, can I add to that, Brandon? I'll say, go see a performance, you know, whether it's a local performance or something even that you can find online and then copy some of the choreography that you see. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be, that that's right. And then perform it for us all here. No, just kidding. <laughs> but you can. Um, but that would be really fun. So I love that, Brandon. That's really fun. Um, okay. Uh, I see your G, G. Colliander. I don't know your first name, but you're on, on camera. So can you pick another card to combine with Kylie's dance? Could it be as simple as animals and take dog for walk? Or am I oversimplifying here? Well, I, do you have any animals, Kylie? Could you choreograph a dance on a walk with your dog? Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I sort of love that idea um, of having some casual dance in your life, like having a couple eight counts on every walk that you do with a dog or take a TikTok dance um, and then do it, perform it while you're walking your dog. <laughs> I think that's really fun too. Um, you're gonna have to pick some inspiration from whatever everyone's telling you here. So think Kylie, which one you're gonna commit to because we're gonna be your accountability partners. Amy, you're on camera. So can you give us another card to combine with Kylie's dance card? Oh, I think she's on mute. I think it's um, Ami, I think. Um, oh, Ami. We might be on mute. Yeah. yeah. There's a mute button on the bottom left. And if anybody else has any in the chat that we can, we want to add to Kylie's suggestions, I think that'd be fun. 
I'm going to just pick while we wait for Ami. Kylie, I'm going to add circus back in. I think you should do some Arabat, one of those like acrobatic silks classes. Cool. Those look so fun to me. Okay, Ami. I need to do that. <laughs> oh, it's still not working. Put it in the chat, please. Please put it in the chat for us. So Kylie, while you think, because we're going to bring you back on at the end to decide one idea for up-leveling your dance. Oh, I love that, singing. Do you sing? I love to sing, but no one wants to hear it. Okay. <laughs> but I sing with my daughter and, and we sing off key and we dance at the same time. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Ami, I'm going to say that's amazing. Take an account. Encanto, court, use some of the choreography from one of the, the, the Disney songs and then uh, learn a song with her and then perform it in your, in your living room. That's another good idea. Um, so Kylie, uh, do you have something that you want to commit to? Um, is there anything that inspired you or something that you will do with your dance that we can all follow along with? Well, this is going to sound strange, but I used to do silks, um, which you've mentioned. And I've been saying for like three years, I really want to go take a class. I really want to take a class, but I've always put it on the back burner because family comes first. Um, but there's a class uh, close to me that I've been looking at. So I just need to commit to it and book and go. Okay, Kylie, I'm your accountability partner. I'm going to find you. Sign up today before the end of the EOD, before end of day. Um, we need you to sign up for one sales class. Deal. Amazing. Um, I love that so much. And uh, you're sort of inspiring me. I want to take one of those classes too, because I hate to work out. And that seems like a really a beautiful way to possibly get some health and wellness in. Okay, Brandon, you're our second contestant, if that's okay. Um, this is, we're doing this twice and then we'll wrap with any questions. But um, do you, you've seen the 50 cards because you were Kylie's partner, but do you want to go through them again? Or do you have one that um, speaks to you right now? Um, I, I love. Um... <laughs> or do you want to go through all of them again? You want us to show you all 50? Uh, I think, I mean, uh, I don't, I'm, it's tough for me right now. Uh, but I guess if you could just flick through them one more time. Yeah, let's go fun. through them. I, we, all we want is one that jumps out to you. It doesn't mean you have to be doing it. It could be something you've never done. Just something that you're like, ooh, that's, that's something that's resonating with me today. Math, math, math and sciences. Okay, I love that. That's one, one of that the things really I've, lights me up. Yeah, tell me. One of Why? the things I've always wanted to do. So I, I was, I've always been very good at math. Um, and particularly good in physics. And I've always wanted to do or get, give a try to a millennium problem, which are those, you know, problems that people work on in all their lives. And you have like a million dollar prize for it or something like that, but nobody ever solves them. There are like five people that have, uh, that have solved them. So that's, that is something that uh, I think about often and think that would interest me. Oh, I love that so much. Well, that that's completely out of left field because I thought you were having a hard time. So I thought you'd be like, oh, maybe I'll just pick running. I don't know. That's you're, you're ta <laughs> you want to tackle millennium problems. That's pretty unbelievable. Um, so uh, let's go deeper, like we said. So tell us where, are you, where do you sit in Exeter um, first of all, all? I'm the president of Exeter. Oh, well, I didn't know that. So thank you for, for modeling. Um, and Thank you for being here, by the way, because we often don't see C-suite people in uh, women's history events. So I appreciate that so much. Now- I appreciate, I appreciate the invite. It's, a, it's been a great <laughs> session. Uh, okay, so next is tell us why. What feelings and values do math and sciences bring up for you? Uh, they engage my mind in a way that I really enjoy. I don't get a lot of opportunities to think about something really deeply or in a really nuanced way. Um, and math engages my brain uh, in a way that nothing else does. So especially complex math, like, you know, integral, integral calculus or physics, it's, it's kind of interesting to me. Okay, you're not just showing off. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> okay, now tell us about um, those. So, so what I'm hearing is that it allows for deep focus uh, a, a, and a, a certain type of engagement um, of of the mind. Um, tell us about like the feelings. What do you feel like when you're done trying to tackle something like that? Um, there is. I mean, there's just a, I guess, a feeling of gratification in term, and I don't even have to solve it. Um, sometimes, you know, working through it, um, uh, not solving it, and then having that epiphany in the shower three months later, where you realize that you did solve it, is is more gratifying than anything. So it's it's really just the challenge and the nuance of it. Um, you know, in, in so much of what I do on a general basis in business or in uh, life, I work off of the mean, right? Like, I'm not trying to sell to me, I'm trying to sell to everyone else not like me, right? Uh, I'm trying to create products that are for, um, for people that have different ways of consuming information. And so I'm constantly, you know, put back into general generalities, mm -hmm. right? Like, Nobody wants me to talk for 25 minutes on anything or for two hours on anything. They want to snip it. They want a headline, right? Um, and so my life is reduced to sound bites. Math and science has allowed me that opportunity to do a little bit more than that. Well, that's really beautiful. So what I would say to you again, if I was on your leadership team, is I would ask you, Brandon, have you had a chance to have nuance uh, this week in your life? Have you, have you had, had a chance to have deep focus this week? Have you had a chance to engage your mind outside of the monkey mind of a thousand things that you may be thinking of? And if you say, actually, no, I haven't had flow or deep engagement or any ability to trade a nuance, then again, I would say, well, then that's more likely that you'll feel burnt out. I so, have not. <laughs> oh, you have it. Okay. So we're going to wish that on you. Um, <laughs> and is there anybody here that wants to combine Cody, I'll ask you first, since you're on camera, um, and Jennifer, you're on camera. Can you pick a card for Brandon to combine with math and sciences, assuming that he may not have time in the next two weeks to solve a millennial pro millennium problem? But uh, is there another card that can that you think would look would be good to combine with math and sciences? Because I have one too, but I'll you go first. I'll, I'll let Jennifer do it since. Then. All right, Jennifer, you can you go for you go first. Well, the first thing that came to mind is: is there a paintbrush? Oh, yes, there is. So, um, okay, so we're now combining art with math and sciences. Yes. I love that so much. I think that's really beautiful. So um, what what kind of art, like NFT, Web3 art, um, or actual real, real like coding? Because I was thinking of coding. So what could be really fun is, Brandon, for you to experiment with Web3, um, and some coding, um, or even buying an NFT that's that's related to math and sciences because someone had to code that, and then you, uh, like Jennifer says, you're you're also perusing art. Um, but Jennifer, were you thinking uh, more JPEG art or more actually art on a canvas? I was thinking art on a canvas, actually. Oh, I love that, Brandon. Have you ever done any art? I have not. Uh, my father-in-law lives with me and he's an artist and I built him a painting studio in our uh, first floor. So I, I've got access to it, but I've never been an artist myself. I've got a, I've got a benign tremor from when I was a boxer. So my hands are too shaky to paint. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I still think there's some, there's possibly something there. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I'll get painting it. A millennial problem to just sort of see what, how it comes to life. Um, in on the page that way so you can see it um i think is really beautiful yeah cody what about you anything that you want to combine with math and sciences for brandon oh definitely let's see um so they can see the next slide please and maybe just the next one all right so um i'm going to combine in spiritual wellness I don't know I how. Exactly. Yeah, tell yeah. us, tell us how how you would combine it. Which one? Yoga, religion, or retreats, or other types of spiritual wellness? 
Um, I'm going to leave that open to Brandon, but I would say that there um, to infuse meaning into this sort of art and using sort of both sides of the brain on the analytical side and the creative side for um, you know using art and, and science, um, having some sort of meditative quality to it. Um, and being able to make it that flow state or having something on in the background while it's it's happening so that it, it feels really full. I don't know if that resonates, but to me, there's a way to combine those three. And maybe yoga just for fun, because I, I like yoga. <laughs> it would be cool to get other people to do yoga. But well, we do know yeah. diffuse thinking, as Brandon said, we know that we get our best ideas in the shower. Another beautiful place for diffuse thinking is yoga. We know a lot of people. So that's why I will also, I'm going to, combine outdoors with math and sciences for you, Brandon. Um, and think, and I would just want you to go online, look at the millennium problems right now, think about one that is exciting to you and just take a hike and commit to literally not having, unless it's music without words um, or anybody with you, just one hike that has you with diffuse thinking, thinking about some really focused um, math or problem. Because I love this idea that you deserve deep focus and nuance. Uh, and if you said you haven't had it, again, that's something that your leadership team should, should wish for you. Um, and I really thank you for sharing. Um, I hope this gave you some idea of how you can play with these types of cards. You could do it very solitaire. You could do it and share with your groups. Um, but as long as you just take it to the next level, the main and most important question is what values and feelings does it bring up for you? Because often it gets to those things that we're missing. And those are the things that when we don't have those in our life leads us to feel languishing and burnt out. And so that's the gift I think for all of you is to take those values and feelings. We'll grab an accountability or spiritual partner, a spiritual friend here, and then make sure that you, you follow up. I love that. I love that game. Um, and I, I would like to use it with our team and I, I will send it around for sure. And, and thank you for letting us be sort of beta users. We are about to launch a product at Exeter tomorrow. And wow. as, part, as part of that launch, we are asking, inviting people to be beta users of our, our products. So it resonates that we get to sort of do that in kind. Um, well, so, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being a prototype uh, data user. Anytime. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a real joy. Um, well, we're at time. I, I know people may have had questions. Last time you were gracious enough to answer a few of those questions. Absolutely. After well. If there's any questions, we absolutely can answer them. Um, or if uh, you want to ask me uh, offline, just email them to Cody and absolutely. I'm happy to answer them for you. Thank you so much. This was so, for me, it really, I think this was my antidote to burnout this week, um, to be honest. And so I appreciate your time and coming back. And uh, I'm for those who obviously want to read Eve's book, we'll send information about Unicorn Space. Um, we can follow Fair Play Life or Eve on Instagram. I'm going to add LinkedIn too, because we're kind of a LinkedIn crew. Um, and you have great content there that I always love. And then uh, sign up for the newsletter at Fair Play Life. Is that still accurate, Eve? Yes, we also have a podcast called the Time Out Podcast. Yeah. The only reason why I'm bringing that up is because you get to be voyeuristic and actually hear how people are dividing up the labor in their homes. And I think that is always so fun. Yeah. Well, we, we will uh, definitely share all that around to everybody. And if people have questions, you know, please send them to me and I'll, I'll pass them along to Eve. So this is wonderful. I really appreciate your time. And thank you everybody for joining. I know it's a busy week. Thank you all for joining. I'm leaving you with one last homework assignment, which is that you all deserve in the next seven days to have one day where you say the most important thing you do that day is outside of your roles as a parent and or a partner and or a professional and or a caretaker. One day. And if you have a thing that's outside of those roles and you do it and you actually take this homework assignment, tell Cody, please, so she can uh, collect that data for me. We will encourage you. You deserve a permission to be unavailable from your roles. Thank you. Great message. Appreciate it. Thanks, Eve. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thank Have a great day. Bye. Thanks. Good luck with the launch. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.